So, uh, start this off. Okay, am I on? Or am I on? I'm not on. I'm good. Okay. So, good morning, everybody. How are you guys today? How many of you, well, maybe you got good news. It may be you don't have to tell. But were any of you the winner? <coughs> Not even a place to sit down on. 
Can you imagine that? Yeah, they had to sleep on the floor. What else happens when people don't have enough money? Yeah, food, people get hungry. Sometimes the kids have to go to bed without having anything to eat. That's true. Okay. No brushing your teeth and no dentist to go to when your teeth start to fall out. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, and no doctor to go to. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, no warm clothes. No There's pressure. lots of problems. So let me ask you again. If you had a billion dollars, what would you do? Spend <coughs> it. On who? <laughs> who would you spend it on? A house in church. What about people that didn't have a house? What if you knew somebody didn't have a house? What would you do? I would buy stuff for them. You would. You'd buy stuff for them. Yeah. And that would be kind. It would be kind. And what good is it to have a lot of money if you don't know how to be kind? Yeah. You wouldn't. And you wouldn't be happy either. So let's keep that in mind today. Uh, and if you do win, if you did win that billion dollars and you're keeping it to yourself, well, just think about that. That's all. <laughs> The, uh, the funny thing is that my daughter was in the play last night and we, my son and I went up to see her we bought her some flowers and we were going to put a lottery ticket in with the flowers <laughs> and we forgot to. <laughs> and on the way to the play we hear about so many more. Alright, let's, have, let's have a prayer today. Not for the people who have lots and lots of money, but for people who don't have enough. Okay? God, there are people in the world that don't have enough to eat and don't have a warm place to live or a comfortable place to sleep. There are people in the world who are sick and can't see a doctor, or poor and can't get to a dentist. And God, we pray for all of them. And for all those of us who have more than enough, help us to learn to be kind. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. And boys and girls, if you'd like to come downstairs with Miss Samantha, Miss Sally, and myself, we are going to play some Bible bingo and talk about uh, all sorts of cool stuff. <laughs> So come on downstairs and pick your bean bag. Yeah. Meet me on the tree rug.
Let's take some time now for our joys and concerns, things that are on our minds, our hearts, and uh, that we'd like to perhaps include in our prayers. Anyone? told me that Dolly has a birthday this week, so let's sing happy birthday to her. <laughs> God, we open our hearts to you today. We come here today knowing that you know us, that you see us, and you understand. We come here knowing that our lives are lived in your presence every day. And we ask us, your blessing on us and help us to be aware that you are here and with us in every moment of our lives. We pray that you will bless us at the beginning of this new year as we make our way through as we uh, live through the winter in these northern states, it can be tough. But we thank you that you are with us in all of it, every moment. And so we come to you today with our concerns and our joys. For Christine, and we thank you for the work she's putting in in her studies, and for all of our students in this church as well, we pray as they work to improve themselves. And we thank you for Dolly, who is a member of our community and whose birthday it is, and we ask your blessing on her as well. As the wind roars around us outside, we sit here warm and comfortable in our church. And we know that we have you to thank for this place, for this community, for the love that is here in this room. And we ask that you will help us always to recognize it and live in it. And so we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Janet's going to come and read our first scripture reading today. As you may know, most of the New Testament is actually letters written to uh, people to explain the faith or to encourage them. And one of the most important of these is the uh, letter to the Hebrews, which really is a theological study. And uh, Janet is going to read for us from that today. The Holy Scripture for God's people. Oh, Hebrews 13, 1 through 8, 15 through 16. Keep on loving another as Christians. Remember to welcome strangers into your homes. There were some who did, and that welcomed angels without knowing it. 
Remember those that are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Remember those that are suffering as though you were suffering as they are. Marriages to be honored by all, and husbands and wives must be faithful to each other. God will judge those who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. Let us be bold then and say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your former leaders who spoke God's message to you. Think back on how they lived and died and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us then always offer praise to God as our sacrifice through Jesus, which is the offering presented by lips that confess him as Lord. Do not forget to do good and to help one another, because these are the sacrifices that please God. Obey your leaders and follow their orders. They watch over your souls without resting since they must give to God an account of their service. If you obey them, they will do their work gladly. If not, they will do it with sadness, and that would be of no help to you. Keep on praying for us. We are sure we have a clear conscience because we want to do the right thing at all times. Thank you, Dad. Let's uh, stand and sing together the glory of God. Yes, the singer. 
I don't know if she's a saint, but it makes you listen anyhow. Here's what she said in her song, Soak Up the Sun, which I think, first of all, that's good advice. Soak up the sun. Get out there in the sunny light when you can, especially if you live in northern New England. When it comes, don't waste it. But the passage I'm referring to that was read today is the one that says, keep your free lives free from the love of money and be satisfied with what you have. And what Cheryl Crow said in that song was, it's not getting what you want, but wanting what you've got that makes all the difference. And I like that idea. She's saying, don't cry for what you don't have. Love what you have. I think it's good advice. Now, that's a lot easier for those of us who have everything that we need, of course. Remember, remember, there are many among us who do not. When people have too little, I don't think we should repeat this verse to them. I heard someone recently say that old story again. This is a rumor that many immigrants have been given new cars. How many of you have heard that? Sometimes it's new phones, sometimes it's new cars, but this idea that somehow the government has decided to hand out new cars to immigrants from Somalia and other places. Is it true, Michael? No, absolutely not. No. I don't know where that rumor began, but it's not at all true. The fact is, most immigrants that come to Maine are condemned to live in poverty for quite a while because they cannot get a work permit until they have been here for a year. Used to be 90 days. Now it's a year. How many of you can live without income for a year? Pretty tough. That's what we're asking for. I don't think I'm going to tell those immigrants to be thankful for what they've got. But I am going to say, this is a society that does not need to have anyone living in poverty. And maybe we should be doing something about that. All right, that's the end of that one. Next one. Uh, a happy pastor? Okay. Um, it says in this passage, Obey your leaders and follow their orders. <laughs> they watch over your souls without resting, since they must give to God an account of their service. If you obey them, they will do their work gladly. Not, they will do it with sadness and never give no help to you. Isn't that a great Bible verse? <laughs> <laughs> obey your leaders. Obey your pastor. And I want you to obey me. And I'm going to tell you what your orders are right now. This is what I want you to do, and I expect you to obey me. I want you to grow in your faith. I want you to get deeper into the love and grace of Christ. And I insist that you love one another. Do it! Will you obey me? Yes. yes. Good. If you disagree with me, or object to me, or don't understand me, or just don't like me. I'm fine with that. If you disagree with me, that means you're at least thinking about things that I've said, and that's all I'm asking for. That's what I want you to do. So those are my orders, and you must obey them. Grow, thrive, be at peace. I order you to. All right? Thank you, sir. I like that nice military answer. Thank you. All right, another one. Try the balloon festival. Ah, the balloon festival. Passage says, do not forget to do good and help one another because these are the sacrifices that please God. So, God likes the balloon festival. Do you? Have you been to it? No. Okay. No? Well, wait till it's a rainy day and then go. Then there'll be no problem. There'll also be no balloons. But... <laughs> God likes the balloon festival. But God does not like religious festivals. Ooh. Now let me clarify. Part of the religion of the Old Testament involved festivals. 
people would gather to have a big gathering to celebrate. What was the most significant one of these? Passover. Passover, yes. Passover was the most well known. And the festivals were for the purpose of honoring and praising God. And people brought offerings and sacrifices often to the temple in Jerusalem. And then while they were there, they would celebrate. And there are several places in the Bible where God says, I hate your festivals. Why? Because people came to honor God without honoring each other. The poor people of the land couldn't find justice. The weakest people were taken advantage of. And God did not want a sacrifice of money or animals. Instead, God wanted a sacrifice of love and justice. Sunday morning worship may not be a festival, although it should be. But as an offering to God, it is not worth much if it is not also an offering of love for God and for others. When we gather here, God hates it if we are hateful towards one another. All right, another one. Till death do us part. Oh, I heard two at once. What was it? Sarah McLaughlin. Sarah McLaughlin. Oh, yeah. Also, again, I don't know if she's a saint. But it says in the passage we read, Remember your former leaders who spoke God's message to you. Will you remember me? That's not my question. That's Sarah McLaughlin's question in her song. Will you remember me? But let me ask you, ten, not, ten years from now, will you remember me? Yes. Think so? Mm -hmm. It could be good, it could be bad. When I worked as a substitute teacher, I said, listen, kid, it's not a good thing when the substitute teacher learns your name. <laughs> well, I hope that when you do look back, you think of me well. It says, remember your former leaders in this passage, how they lived and they died, and imitate them. Well, I hope that when I am gone from here, I will be remembered fondly and with love. But when it is going to be, and maybe not too long way, that I will be your former leader. And some of you are going to miss me, and some of you maybe not so much. But I hope you think of me, and you think of my walk of faith, and you want to imitate it as I imitate Christ. That's my hope. All right, another one. A big job in the U.S. A big job in the U.S. What was that, anyhow? Um, oh, yeah. The passage that we read said, remember those who were in prison, as though you were in prison with them. Now, times have changed since this was written. This writer was dirt writing during a time when there were many prisoners who were jailed because they believed in Jesus. Others jailed for their religious faith. Others jailed because they were simply in debt. It was these people in particular that we were to remember, to visit and help care for their families. But prisoners and suffering go together still today, just like this passage. If all the American prisons were put together in one place, it would be the fifth largest city in America bigger than Philadelphia. If we emptied the prisons and then decided to refill them from people with Maine, we would all have our own cell and a million of us would need to bring someone from another state. That's a lot of people. Right here in Androscoggin County, am I in Androscoggin County? No. Uh, okay. Well, if you were in Androscoggin County, you know that there are about 200 people in the jail there in Androscoggin County. And I've been there. One of the most disturbing things I ever heard anyone say to me, I think, was when I was asking a prison official when I could visit someone that was in jail. And he said to me, well, you can pretty much come anytime, but don't come during feeding hours. <laughs> feeding hours. Where do you have feeding hours? At the zoo. At the zoo. And I thought it was troublesome that he said that. I feel that we have not done what we should in this respect. There are many 
people that have uh, sponsored ministries of our prisoners, but none of the churches that I have have done that, and that, I feel, is a, a failure on my part. Perhaps that's something we need to do, to have a ministry in the prison somewhere near us. But remember, it says right there in the Bible, don't forget those who are in prison. All right, another one. Open door policy. Open door policy. It says in the passage we read, keep on loving one another as Christians and remember to welcome strangers into your homes. Now, I am telling you right now, do not do what the Bible says to do. Times have changed. A mostly rural and small village world with few hotels and no social services network relied on distant relatives and open space to provide for travelers and people in crisis. You out there, you at Bible times were expected to open your home, even to strangers, because there was no place else to go. So open your home to strangers in the village. I don't know if that's a good idea for us today. We certainly are not living in rural villages as much as we once did. Most people in America live in the cities. And you have to be careful, do you not, about who you let into your home? Mm -hmm. So be careful about that. But as a church, we can afford to be less careful. And we do open our doors to people here. And we let people enter. And sometimes those people turn out to be angels. I can think of two people right now that were pushed aside by society, told they were not good enough to be around others, who came to the church and turned out to be angels, and worked with us for years and became spiritual models for us. I know that this happens. So I'm telling us, let's continue to do that work. Let's continue to make sure our church is open. There are churches out there that are posting armed guards. I don't really want to become one of those. I understand the needs, but what I want to say is, let's open our doors. Let's be wise. Let's be careful. But let's look out the world with loving eyes. When we see people coming, recognizing they might just be angels among us. Another one. Got time for a couple more. Yes, something unchanging. I just got to figure out where it is. It says in here, in this passage, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm not sure what to think about that. Because my perspective is everything changes. Am I correct about that? Everything changes. We tend to think not, but every mountain wears away. Every friendship comes to an end. Every river changes its course, and every life changes its course as well. There is nothing in this world that lasts forever. But there is Christ. And we will find our attitude towards Jesus, and our understanding of Jesus will change a lot. But Christ will remain and we will always be held in God's love. I'm going to pick one more, but if you have one that you want to pick, go for it. Praise. Praise. It says in this passage we read, let us always offer praise to God as our sacrifice to Jesus Christ. Offer praise to God. Praising God is a major theme of the Bible. You cannot read the Bible without finding that often in there. And it's important. But it's not as if God needs our praise. God is not Tinkerbell. <laughs> Remember, Tinkerbell starts to die if people don't believe in her. This is not true of God. God doesn't need our attention. God doesn't need our applause. I, on the other hand, do need your attention. And I crave your applause. I don't mind. But remembering to praise God helps me to remember that it is not me here at this church that is the center of the church's life. And it is not me who created this place. And it is not me who helps us go forward into the future. It is God. And 
our praise of God is not from God, it's for us. It's for us to change our perspective, to help us to see things differently, to do better than we've done before. Let us continue to praise God so that we can be who God wants us to be, to see the world as God wants us to see it. And I'm going to stop right there. Amen. Amen. Let's take a little time for a thought and reflection. Thank mm -hmm. you.